how long normally yung time na nabivacant yung condo in your experience? You said to, uh, if this is the market price, you, you either go with the market price or lower uh, yeah, sa pag-rent. Pag right? pag yeah. How can people know where the market price is? 50-year rule, condo. Mm -hmm. Sinasabi nila na, mm -hmm. after 50 years, uh, the condo is gone. What's your, what, how, how, do you, how do you explain it to people na, uh, will it be really gone or uh, will it be still continuous or mm. the concerns of people? Eh, what if ano na, degraded naman na talaga yung building by 50 years? Will it will they still fix it up? What's 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 gonna happen? Ano mm -hmm. So what happens to your property? What happens to what you own as compared to people who are saying I buy land, masunog yung bahay, I still own the land. Right. So how does it work? Something bad happens. Di na pwede tirahan yung building. Right. Uh, do you still own a piece of that area or? If you get the if you get the money, not everyone to go up a na papa tayo pa yung area na yun. What what what's gonna happen? Ano yung common dynamics? Because I yeah. hindi ako familiar wala pa ako nakita ng scenario na nasunog yung ano. But I get a lot of questions about that as well. Yeah. The the things that you also need to watch out for is the taxes that you need to pay. You say adalasan yun. You think about the utilities, mm -hmm. the association dues, de ba? But the taxes are also very important. Mm -hmm. So every year you need to pay the real estate property tax, or what we call in Filipino as a milliard, right? Mm. So that's very important. And if you pay it in the first quarter of the year, or as early as January, may discount yan. Mm. Kaya mas maganda bayaran natin kaagad. What's an acceptable yield today? Now, mm. if I get this uh, property, I should at least get this amount of percentage para least sulit naman yung pagkuha ko ng condo. Dapat, mm -hmm. you add yung amortization, you add yung cost dun sa monthly dues, mm -hmm. uh, it should be enough to cover you, your rent. Or if you make a de decent gain pa, even better. Right. Uh, what what are your tips for them na at least kikita pa rin sila from all of this? Normally, people would lease out a property for one year, no? Yes. Do you suggest it to be that way? Or do you suggest it to, uh, you lock in someone for three years, ganyan? Or mm -hmm. do you suggest na lower than a year? Uh, what's your take on Airbnb? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you think will be better? Uh, long-term lease versus Airbnb, what are the pros and the cons? In this video, we talk about all of the things that you need to know if you want to buy, sell, or even rent out your condo. Think about this as Condo Living, Condo Renting 101. Make this your crash course for condo investing. Check this video out. Hi guys, I'm inviting you to come to Icon 2019 in Davao, November 30. So see you all there. It will be a one-day event all about investing, all about making your money work hard for you. So link down below. Hey guys, so this is part two of our interview with real estate expert <laughs> Ramon King. Yeah, so so this is also part of Icon 2019 Davao. You'll see Ramon King as part of the speakers there as well, as he shares his expertise on how you can make your money work hard for you using real estate. So, uh, Ramon, uh, I'm gonna continue, no, uh, in the lines of hmm, condo rentals, making money off condos. The biggest concern of people, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have made videos and content about this, but you can clarify it for everyone also. Uh, 50 year rule condo. Mm -hmm. Sabi nila na after 50 years, uh, the condo is gone. What's your, what, how, how do you how do you explain it to people? Na uh, will it be really gone or uh, will it be still continuous or mm -hmm. the concerns of people? Eh, what if ano na degraded naman na talaga yung building by 50 years? Will it will they still fix it up? What's 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 gonna happen? Actually, that's a common misconception mm -hmm. about condominiums. Uh, 50 years, kasi that's the standard life of a corporation by law. Mm -hmm. So when you set up a corporation in the Philippines, 50 years and talaga. Okay. And then after 50 years, the owners, the shareholders will have to vote if they want to extend the life of the corporation for another 25 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So in relation to condos, once we turn over a condominium to the owners, kasi, we have to form a condominium corporation. Mm -hmm. So that is why dun na buo yung misconception na 50 years lang ang condo. Okay, okay. But most condominiums now, most developers now, uh, they build condos that last for more than 50 years. Mm. So, yung question na lang dyan is the structural integrity of the building. Mm. So, meron naman mga checks na ginagawa mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially when you're talking to the reputable developers. Mm -hmm. They have well-in-place well, well in place property management corporations that take care of the condo through time. So, make sure na yung pag-degrade ng building hindi kasing bilis. Mm. And depende rin sa paggawa ng tower when they started it, di ba? So, kung maganda yung foundation, 
it's not going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. So when it gets uh, degraded, uh, it's a building mm -hmm. 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the line. Right. Uh, the condo, the condo corp, the property management is handled mostly by the developer, parent, or is it mostly handled already by the homeowners of the con condo? Uh, in most cases, it's the developer, parent. Okay, because, which is good, no? That's, that's yeah. supposed to be good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because you want the developer to be there every mm. step of the way, mm. diba? Para to make sure that it's uh, mm -hmm. maganda para hindi yung nabenta na yung condo sa yo, mm -hmm. already sold the property to you. Tapos, mm -hmm. kayo na bahala, diba? Mm -hmm. But here, may stake pa rin yung developer. Mm -hmm. So, kung maganda yun, kung the developer follows through and manages the property even after the property has been delivered or mm -hmm. turned over to the buyers. Because you see the commitment there. And their brand is already at stake there. Kapag mm -hmm. hindi naging maganda yung property management, tatamaan din yung reputation. Mm -hmm. So, it's very important that you, you know, you only, you only deal with developers who have that trust or you have that commitment to really deliver quality products but also maintain okay. those products. I get a lot of questions. What if you buy a condo mm -hmm. and then, kunyari ah, and syempre this doesn't happen naman or it doesn't even happen all the time, right. ah, nasunog siya. Mm -hmm. So, what happens to your property? What happens to what you own as compared to people saying, I buy land, masunog yung bahay, I still own the land. Right. So, how does it work? Paganon. Um, Normally, meron tayong fire insurance. Mm -hmm. no? Sa buong condominium, mm -hmm. part of the association dues that you pay goes to the fire insurance of the whole building. Mm -hmm. Pero yung contents ng unit mo, if you furnish it, let's say you, you spend 1 million mm -hmm. on renovation, mm -hmm. appliances, furniture, etc. Mm -hmm. Hindi kasama yun. Mm -hmm. So if you want to insure the contents of your unit, you have to make, you have to get separate insurance for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Kaya normally when we get loans through the banks, requirement na meron din tayong fire insurance. Okay. Kasi, of course, the banks want to be protected. Kung may mangyari nga dun sa condo, at least, di ba, yung mismong value ng condo covered ng insurance. Pero what happens during, uh, yun nga, some, something bad happens, hindi na pwedeng tirahan yung building, right. uh, do you still own a piece of that area? Or if you get the if you get the money, not everyone, siguro papayag na papatayuan pa yung area na yun. What, what, what's gonna happen? Ano yung common dynamics? Kasi, I, yeah. hindi ako familiar, wala pa ako nakita ng scenario na nasunog yung ano, but I get a lot of questions about that as well. Yes. Actually, then napapasok yung condominium corporation. Mm -hmm. So, so magkakaroon ng botohan. Mm -hmm. So, yung majority, if they decide na, okay, hindi na talaga livable to, mm -hmm. benta na lang natin, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, even if you voted against that, mm -hmm. pero yun yung majority, mm -hmm. di ba? Uh, may makukuha ko pa rin dun sa proceeds. Mm -hmm. uh, that's proportionate to the property that you purchase. So, let's mm -hmm. say you bought, your, your, your share of the corporation is 1% relative to the size of your unit. Then one percent of the proceeds will go to you. Okay, that's whoever buys it from mm -hmm. you, uh, right. regardless if it's a malamang kung sino rin developer, they have sila rin yung may capacity to, uh, to buy, buy it, buy it back again, again di ba? Yeah. So everyone gets cash. Because I, I think the uh, problem then is mm -hmm. if they say na tirahan siya, everyone will have to shell a larger amount of money to Renovate. to fix it also. Yeah, no? fix it oh, then that's that's what's gonna make it more uh, expensive, I guess. Also, yes, because yun wala na yun sa association do so it's mm. another expense that you have to puff up from your own funds. Okay, mm. uh, for those who don't know, also, how much normally does property uh, association dues would normally go? And hindi hindi na papa sinan tao to. Yung mga condos niya, condos, mm. iba iba rin yung rate nila sa water. Mm -hmm. uh, Shebre Meralco standard, pero yung uh, rate nila sa water depending yan sa, sa development also no? and yes. how they would charge mm -hmm. for it. But how, how does it normally work? Yeah, uh, in our developments in Alveo, we average sign 100 pesos to about 110 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. pesos per square meter for residential. So that includes uh, the use of the amenities, the maintenance of the common areas, mm -hmm. yung pasweldo sa property management. Mm -hmm as well as the security and the mm. utility staff of the condominium. Mm -hmm. So, and of, as I mentioned earlier, portion also goes to the insurance of the building. Mm. So, that's what you pay for the association dues. And then, what was the other question again? Sorry. I'll cut this. What are we talking about? So, the association dues. Ano yung, ah, water. Water, water yeah. yeah uh, water, yeah. And, or, saka mga, siguro you can also talk about yung other expenses na Oh. hindi na for forecast ng mga tao uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. other expenses na hindi nila na for forecast na kasama kasi uh, yung yung iba parang hindi nila sama sa budget nila they, they only compete for the amortization pero they don't know na ito pa pala yung babayaran ko tapos may insurance yeah. din babayaran din every year na extra tapos yes. ito, 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 ito. Yeah. okay go okay so aside from the association dues 
the utility bills, mm-hmm. right? So you mentioned about water. Mm-hmm. So it's true. Uh, depending on the development, the water bill might be different. The way we charge it, um, like in the case of BGC, for all of our projects here in BGC, medyo mas mataas yung rate natin for the water because the water coming from the faucet. You can drink it already. Ah, talaga? It's potable. All, yeah. all, all projects in BGC or just just uh, Ayala projects? All Ayala projects, I would okay. say. But I'm not sure with uh, other developers. Okay. Uh, okay. I can I can say mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. So that's one. So okay. it depends. So. But of course, in other areas, it's more in water. I have to say this. I have to say this. Guys, if you are living in BGC, Serendra, etc., Please, pa kita inum kayo diretso. <laughs> comment below, comment below. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's one, that's one. That's the reason why it's mm. uh, a little bit higher. Kaya magtata kayo but mas mahal. Mm. And then for the the electricity, it's almost always the same mm-hmm. relative to the other developments. Mm-hmm. Pare parehas lang. Mm-hmm. The the things that you also need to watch out for is the taxes that you need to pay. Mm-hmm. Kasi kadalasan yon, you think about the utilities, mm-hmm. the association dues, di ba? But the taxes are also very important. Mm-hmm. So every year you need to pay the real estate property tax, or what we call in Filipino as a milliard, right? Mm. So that's very important. And if you pay it in the first quarter of the year, or as early as January, may discount yan. Mm. Kaya mas maganda bayaran natin kaagad. Oh nga, December guys, December. <laughs> Wala pa. Ipun tayo before early December or late November, walang pila. Yung problem din dun, yung yeah, pila. Yung oh, pila, oh. Di lang yung discount importante yung time na sayang nyo. That's Anyways. right. Yeah, so you might as well pay it in advance. Mm. Uh, another thing is uh, association dues, say property tax, uh, your maintenance ng unit. Okay. So especially if you rent out the unit, mm. uh, kailangan natin ni consider yan. You have to set aside the budget for that because minsan may masisira, unavoidable, mm. unavoidable na. Mm. Even if it's um, covered in your deposit, but if the tenant is not the one who broke that thing or that part of your unit, you're the one who's in charge to you know to fix that. Mm. So may mga natural wear and tear na nangyayari. So you need to be you need to set aside money for that. So sa rule of thumb, yung one month rent for the whole year contract. If you rent out your property, you have to set that aside for yeah, an unforeseen renovation expenses. But for it doesn't that, happen all the time. For example, 10 million condo, we mentioned it earlier, 10 million peso condo uh, in BGC is most likely a studio around 36, 37 yes. uh, square meters. How much is how much would be my overhead expenses? Uh, syempre yung water, mahirap ma, ma ano yun, but do you know, you can you give them like an average consumption that people normally spend for that, that space, probably two or three people just living, or two people just living there, hmm. plus taxes, plus maintenance cost. Okay. Um... Because I, I experienced living in uh, in a studio in Serendra. So well, from guys, own... so you know already, guys, guys, <laughs> ah, no. Serendra, se- guys, <laughs> comment below. In suit palang. Okay. No. Um, yeah. So the monthly expenses, medyo in BGC, it's mm-hmm. really not including the food. Ah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. siempre food is relative. Kung paano kakain, mm-hmm. kung lagi kakain sa labas magastos mm-hmm. talaga. But the utilities for electricity, we were averaging before about five to six thousand pesos a month. Okay. And then uh, for of course the internet we pay about a thousand for that, so you add that to the, that, and then for water, mga uh, one thousand pesos. Then. Okay, and then taxes for for that area would for that for that space would be around how much? Naman? the million. Ah, the million. Uh-huh. The million would be right now. Uh, the, back then, mga five years ago, it was fifteen thousand. Mm. But now I would. I would guess na medyo mas tumaas na yan, baka okay. na sa 20 to 25. Na. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ngayon, for those who are renting it out, I've mm-hmm. seen a lot of people that ito yung price nila, tapos they take care na they, the tenant they shoulders na rin the monthly amortization, ah, the monthly juice of the the condo. Is that the best practice na ito yung price ko, tapos kakargahin ko na lahat ng kailangan bayaran except electricity? Um, as a landlord, I would recommend na you still uh, pay for the association dues. Okay. So, for example, your rent is fifty-five thousand. Mm-hmm. Tapos the association dues is six thousand. Mm-hmm. So forty-nine thousand lang talaga yung ano mo doon, okay. yung makukuha mo doon. Kasi yung six thousand you need to pay for association dues. So why do I recommend that? It's because you're not sure. Bakama maya yung aso- tenant mo hindi bayaran yung association okay, dues. Risk mo yun. Risk mo yun. Magkaka penalties ka pa. Hindi mm-hmm. endi ko parin mago buy doon mm-hmm. as a landlord. Mm-hmm. So mas safe ka if you're the one who's paying for that. Okay. So you add it to the rent. Now, speaking of rent, uh, ito yung interesting sa lahat, they, they want to know this. What's an acceptable yield today na if I get this uh, property, I should at least get this amount of percentage para isulit naman yung pagkuha ko ng condo? 
Um, it depends on the location, no? Mm-hmm. If you're looking at Makati and PGC because it's already prime and the built-up developments, mm-hmm. the pricing is already higher. Mm-hmm. So if you buy something pre-selling, you can expect upon turnover to get the yield of about five to six percent. Mm-hmm. That's already respectable. Mm-hmm. But in your in your in new areas, you can expect at least the mi- bare minimum is six percent go as high as eight percent. Okay, but that that factors in also that. That's five percent today. But mm. eight years from now, it might be higher because nag appreciate na rin yung property don. And then, right. syempre, rental rates also per year uh, increases also. Yeah. Okay. That's uh that's also a factor because like what's happening now. Uh, before rental rates were only ranging at around eight hundred to one thousand uh-huh. max. Ngayon the minimum is one thousand. Okay. And we're we're seeing rents going as high as one thousand four hundred per mm-hmm. square meter mm-hmm. for the furnished ones mm. because of a lot of yeah foreign. People coming in, the Filipinos having more purchasing power, so they mm. can afford to pay higher rents. Mm-hmm. And of course, the uh, wor- uh, worst traffic that's happening mm. in our country today. So more people are trying to live near their workplace. Hindi traffic sa atin. Ano, ano sobrang sir? traffic. <laughs> sobrang traffic. As in, so, as in, so, sobra, sobra, sobra. That's why, uh, yun nga yun. That's why I think uh, the more traffic it gets, yeah. the more and more people will go into condos because. It will be more expensive for sure, pero yung quality of life eh, mm-hmm. di mo na ma, di mo na mawawat yung oras na nawala. Right. It it allows you to be less creative. Eh. And if you're a business person, you're an entrepreneur, you're a professional, mm-hmm. uh, it's the creativity that will help you make more money. So how can you be creative? Kung pagdating mo palang sa meeting mo or sa office mo bad trip na bad trip yes. na kasi sobrang traffic. Eh. So I think that will be a trend still. You will see more people go in the townships. That being said, also uh, we we're still talking about about rent. Uh, how can people at least get a decent yield, assuming that people will be buying it via amortization? Diba the rule of thumb is dapat mm-hmm. you add yung amortization, you add yung cost dun sa monthly dues. Mm-hmm. Uh, it should be enough to cover you, your rent, or if you make a de- decent gain, pa even better. Right. Uh, what what are your tips for them na at least kikita pa rin sila from all of this? Okay, um, number one uh, tip is when you furnish the unit, don't spend too much. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, you just focus on the essentials, diba? Pag masyado mo siyang pinaganda, you spend so much, that will eat up your yield. Eh. Okay. Kasi you have to consider the cost of the renovation or the, yun nga, yung pag-design ng unit. So that's one main mistake kasi people think that, ah, hindi, kailangan sobrang ganda ng unit ko para mapaupa ko siya, diba? But no, hindi siya ganun. And you would be surprised. Sobrang ganda ng paggawa mo, pero yung difference lang ng markup mo versus the ones na standard lang yung pag maliit na maliit lang mm. or sometimes parehas pa. Okay. So, I would not recommend na sobrang gasosan yung pag-furnish uh, ng unit. Number two is, make sure when you get the the loan, when you get the mortgage, you shop around to mm. different banks. Mm. Wag lang yung, kunyari, for the longest time, you were with one particular bank, tapos trusted mo na yung kausap mo na manager doon, doon ka na rin mag-loan. Mm-hmm. You need to shop around and get the best rate that you can get para mas pababa yung interest rate mo. That way, mas tataas yung yield mo, kasi mas mababa yung pinabayaran mong interest. So, okay. Now, uh, another question is that, if you rent it out, right. ano yung uh, parang rule of thumb na masasabi mo na, hmm, pangit yata sa strategy ko, ilan months ka bakante to say na parang I'm doing a bad job in renting out my property. <laughs> and then, normally, after, kunyari, alis yung tenant, one year lang, right. uh, how long normally yung time na nabivacant yung condo in your experience? So, two um, questions. Pag umabot ka na ng one year, sobrang, sobrang malala na yun. Okay. Diba? There's something wrong with your strategy. Mm. I have experienced before with some clients that they really want to get this particular rate mm-hmm. and they're not negotiable. Mm. Even if sinabi namin, ito yung rate, but no, mm. ito yung gusto ko makuha. Mm. Pero kakaantay ng client na, yung tenant na willing magbayad ng ganung amount, one year na pala yung lumipas. Mm. So, sayang opportunity. Had okay. he lower it down to a little bit of, maybe 5,000 nga lang minsan difference eh na parent na sana yun eh. Mm. So, yan yung isa sa main pitfalls when it comes to renting. Kasi we become so attached to the property, we think na ito lang dapat yung gusto natin makuhang rent. Mm-hmm. ba? Hindi tayo negotiable. So, okay. that's one thing coming into real estate. Kasi, if you lose two, three months na hindi mo na paparent versus sa binaba mo, ang laki na nung kakainin nun dun sa potential yield mo for that year. Tsaka if you're, ano, amortizing, you're paying the loan every month. Right. Uh, Ano yun, instead of may salukasana, uh, you're, you're, you're putting in money out also. Yes. So, bet, oh. is it, would you suggest that it's better that uh, kahit 
halos break even lang sila yeah. because they have to lower the rates mm. versus they stick to a higher price. Right. Um, pero hindi pero mas mas kikita sila mas maganda hindi ka nababakante. Yes, mas maganda talaga hindi ka nababakante. Okay. Especially when you have a loan. Okay. Kasi you're you're not just paying the amortization, you're paying interest as well. Okay, speaking of leasing, uh, what's normally people would lease out a property for one year, no? Yes. Do you suggest it to be that way, or do you suggest it to are uh, you lock in someone for three years ganyan, or do you suggest na lower than a year? Um, my main suggestion is one year muna at okay. first, because you don't know the tenant. Ah. So you may want to put in also into a clause of the rental agreement that you are able to uh, in uh, what they call this to check the unit mm. every now, now and then let's say once every quarter okay ah, pwede yun. You, can, pwede yun. you can go in yeah you can go okay. in but of course you need to advise okay maybe in writing or to text call the tenant bago ka pumunta okay diba ayaw naman siyang gulatin bigla pumunta mm. ka na lang pero ethically speaking pag pinarent mo din yeah you may spare key ka ba dapat or dapat lahat ng key binigay mo sa kanila um, depends on your agreement with okay. the tenant. If you have a spare key, make sure lang na aware siya. Okay. Oh, uh, pag hindi naman, yun na, hindi na siya ethical. Okay. Kasi you're you're hiding that from your tenant. Eh. Okay. So baka alam mo yun. Pero in my in my experience, I always advise my clients to have a spare key, but make sure that the tenant is aware that you have. Okay. Kasi pag nawala yan or bigla siyang tumakas, iwan yung unit wala spare key, problema pa yun, mm. di ba? So dapat may spare key ka, but with the knowledge of your tenant. Okay. We'll end with this since uh, we're talking about revenue from properties. Uh, what's your take on Airbnb? Mm. Uh, what What do you think will be better, uh, long term lease mm. versus Airbnb? What are the pros and the cons? Okay. Uh, actually, in terms of yield, mas maganda talaga ang returns ng Airbnb because you can rent it at a higher price on a daily rate. And if you sum it up for 20 days out of a month, kahit hindi siya 30 days mo siya napaparent, mas mataas pa rin yung return than the long-term lease na one-year contract. The con lang when it comes to Airbnb is the managing of the property. No, So if you will do it yourself, sobrang hassle siya because you need to be there, you have to wait for the tenant to come in. And most of the time, uh, the tenants don't come in at a fixed time. Mm. So minsan darating yan, midnight, mm. o kaya madaling araw pa minsan, mm. you have to be there. Diba? So that's one thing that you need to consider. But if you really want to get that return, there are people there are property managers who are even freelance people who are willing to do the management of your property via Airbnb. So, pwede rin yun. Pwede ka mag-hire na or pwede mong i-outsource yung, outsource yung trabaho na yun. Mm-hmm. So, you just have to run down the financials but there's still potential there to earn higher than the long-term lease. Ang maganda lang din sa long-term lease is wala ka ng yung peace of mind nandun eh. Kasi for one year, isa lang yung kausap mo, hindi mo na kailangan intindihin. Unlike for Airbnb, there's always that risk na what if yung tenant na magstay next week, biglang masira yung unit ko, mm. or may gawin dun sa loob, di ba? Mm. So, may, may ganong risk factor yan. So, you need to be aware of that. So, if you're tolerant of that risk, go ahead, go for Airbnb. But, make sure lang that the condominium allows Airbnb. Mm. No, not don't all, just, no? Not all. Don't just listen or trust your agent sabihin sa'yo na, Oh, hindi, pwede to Airbnb. Oh, may baka gusto lang niya makabenta. Mm. So, you need to double check kung pwede talaga. Kasi we've, we've heard a lot of stories in the past na they were promised na pwede Airbnb. So, yung pala hindi. Mm. Up under you. Sabi ko last question to, pero I, I, I was supposed to ask something then I forgot about it. You said to, uh, if this is the market price, you, you either go with the market price or lower. Uh, yeah, when comes rent. Pag-rent, pag-rent. Yeah. How can people know where the market price is? Um, it's through the brokers as well. Okay. Uh, in, here in the Philippines, because we're not as as uh, advanced as countries like Hong Kong, na you can search it up online. Makita mo kaagad ano yung going rate. Mm. Really have to talk to the brokers mm. who are mm. concentrating or specializing in that particular condominium mm. or area, so they would know what would be the going rate. So that's the main thing. Find a trusting, uh, trusted broker who is reputable, who has that experience in that area, and he will t- he or she will tell you what's a going rate okay. or the market rate. That being said, also brings me to my last question. Toto, toto, last ka talaga to. uh, <laughs> if you're having it rented out, would you suggest that they just rent it out on their own? Meaning, post lang sila sa Facebook or kakilakilala na, oh, may kila, may nagpaparenta ko ng condo ko, or they go through the broker na lang itself? I would suggest you do both. Okay. Because, of course, when, when you hire a broker kasi to lease out your property, when you engage your services, you need to pay them. Mm, mm. And uh, traditionally, one month out of the 12 year, mm, uh, 12 month contract will be the service fee mm, mm. or the commission for the broker. 
So regardless kung ilan brokers yung nag-usap mm. or who help to to rent out your unit, one month lang dito guys. Pero if, kung ikaw, yeah. na pa nakahanap ka naman ng increase to uh-huh. online. Carousel no, the, the, a lot of people are doing it there. Yeah, carousel. Uh-huh. Ang dami na, ang dami na mga property portals ngayon, you can post it there. Mm. Yung nga lang, you'll be the one to do the viewing. Mm. Diba? Ikaw ang pakita ng unit. If you're abroad, you can't do that. Diba? Mm. Or you find someone you, you trust who can do that for you. Tsaka hassle if you don't live near the condo the, or the property that you want to rent out. Yeah. Yung travel to do it also. Yes. Uh, so, you said, uh, First year, no, you give you give them the commission. Right. Second year, third year, pag nagrenew sa yon, you hmm. still give them a month off of that also. It depends on your agreement with ah, the broker. Again, you need so it's to. It's not standard. It's not standard. In some cases, wala. Okay. No, but in most cases, meron. But it's okay. only fifty percent. Hmm. So kung same tenant yun nagrenew, fifty percent of the one month contract, uh, the one month rental, will be the commission again to the agent. Because okay. your agent, naman, your broker will be the one to draw up the papers. Hmm. No, to collect the PDCs, the checks, mm. diba? So, ando pa rin yun. Pero, diminishing yan every year. Okay. Uh, normally, practice namin up to the third year, meron pa. Okay. 25% pa lang, the third year. But, uh, more than that, wala. Okay, so, that's it for now. Ramon King, guys. Don't forget the name Ramon King. He will be in Icon 29 in Davao. Okay, final words for people who are still scared, no? And, sayang kasi, uh, yung kumikita sa atin, mm. Mostly foreigners, eh. And right. as you've seen it, uh, foreigners can buy condos. Yeah. So, nangyayari, they're the ones taking advantage of what's happening. Yeah. So, any encouragement pa for Filipinos na hesitant mag-invest? Uh, I would really recommend every Filipino to look at real estate right now in terms of property, uh, in terms of investing, growing your portfolio. Because marami natatakot because you're going to talk about millions, diba? It's a long-term commitment. But there are financing options that you'd be surprised will allow you to take advantage of the growth that we're experiencing right now. Um, what, what I want to see is more Filipinos being able to take advantage of the growth we're getting, not just the foreigners that come into our properties, no? And drive the prices going up, tas tayo hindi tayo nakikinabang. Mm. So, we really need to take advantage of that. Hindi lang rin naman yun sa property, even with stocks, with business, everything. We need to take advantage of the growth that's happening in our country now. So, that's it for now. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.